Yep. Okay. Um, my name is Annette, and today I am reviewing the speech that the overproduction of college students has damaged the job market because of diminishing human capital. And his three supporting claims were that the need for college is misinforming. The low college admission standards have led to deterioration in curriculum, and that the overproduction of college students has made getting a job harder. Uh, on the first point, that the need for college is misinforming, no student is ever misinformed about college. Uh, Ryan states that high school teachers and guidance counselors perpetuate the idea that every student has to go to college. Um, that's in no way true. In my, experiences, teach, in my experiences, teachers and guidance counselors may insist that students attend college, but in no way do they imply that they absolutely have to. Students are not forced to apply for college. Um, and he also stated that people are able to afford college because colleges offer financial so solutions, um, including loans that need to be paid back so that the vision of true costs is obscured, but that is also not true. Financial aid workshops are available for college, potential college students at the university of their choice that educate them about the different types of financial aid available. <coughs> and in these workshops, the different types are discussed and future costs are also discussed so that they are aware of what they have to do. According to eCampusTours.com, workshops provide students with information about student aid opportunities from the federal government the state, post-secondary institutions, and private sources. Um, some information included also includes information about stu what the students have to pay off after college. Um, and his second point was that low college admission standards have led to the deterioration in curriculum, that students are admitted into a college that already has so many students that there is less interaction with professors and this causes the students to become disengaged. Um, but really, it is the lack of ambition, drive, and effort on the students' parts that causes them to experience an education that feels lacking. Um, because class sizes are usually so large, professors, understandably, don't have the time to interact personally with individual students. But even though professors are not able to do that, students are able to put forth effort in doing so. Dr. Randall S. Hansen um, compiled a list on how students could succeed in college. And several tips include that students should make their presence known or in simpler terms participate. I mean, how many times have you been in a class where a teacher asks a question and the class is just silent, right? Um, when a student makes an effort to take part in class discussions, it shows the professor that they are truly interested in learning and truly want to be in school, and it also opens up lines of communication between professor and student. Another tip is to understand your professors on a personal level. Dr. Hansen suggests that students utilize professors' office hours and or stay after class to ask questions. This is also part of, it, of a third tip of Dr. Hansen's, which is communicating with professors when you are struggling. This is helpful and useful for students who feel that they are not doing well in class. Um, several professors have told me that very few students actually visit them during their office hours and that they just sit in their office eating snacks and watching TV and <coughs> listening to the radio. Um, and that a lot of students who are struggling in class don't ever try to ask for advice, which in the long run could actually help them improve in class. And his third point was that the overproduction of college graduates has made getting a job harder. Um, however, the outlook is looking better for 2010 graduates. Brian Burnside wrote in an article for U.S. News and World Report that was published April 29, 2010, that for the first time in nearly two years, the hiring climate looks hospitable, if only slightly so, to new graduates. The National Association of Colleges and Employers reports that based on a survey of over 175 employers nationwide, it is projected that 5.3% of new graduates will be hired in 2010 than in 2009. Uh, that's just a small increase from the NAC 2009 report in which they predicted that hiring of 2009 graduates would decrease by 21.6%, but even so, it is an increase and therefore an improvement. And so, looking over, 
his three supporting claims that the need for college is misinforming. Low college admission standards have led to a deterioration in curriculum and the overproduction of college students has made getting a job harder. We can see that the need for college is never, that students are never misinformed about the need for college. Um, it's actually the students who lead to the deterioration in curriculum and the job market is looking better for college students. Well, you labeled the advocate's claims and secondary points very clearly. You signposted as you got to each of those points. I thought that was okay. Um, you don't have any data on the first point, but you do challenge the assumption that's being presented there. The one information, you know, the information that you talk about on uh, access to uh, uh, financial aid, that almost feeds into the point that the advocate's presenting. The notion, for instance, that people are overcommitting to this or they're going to schools that they can't really afford or they're deciding to go to college despite the fact that they're going to be in substantial <coughs> debt is not largely discussed. And I think that your answer there is a little uh, sim superficial. You've got an answer. I'm not sure it's a, a strong answer and I'm not sure that it addresses the issue that the advocate presented on that point. On the second point, um, you argue a counterclaim about what the uh, source of the problem is, and I think that that's an interesting idea uh, for that point, too. And you had uh, suggestions for fixing the problem, but the suggestions for fixing the problem seem to presuppose that the problem exists, and I think that you could do a little bit more on that. You had some hypotheticals that you pointed to, and then you did have a little bit of data right at the end when uh, you were talking about how professors sometimes don't get to utilize their office hours. We're all sitting in our offices, apparently, listening to the radio, watching TV, and eating snacks. Uh, you know, and, and I think you could find something a little bit more substantive than that. On the third point, the idea about uh, the job market is an okay response, although it doesn't sound like it's overwhelmingly great, not the disaster that it once was. It's an okay answer on those points. All right, thank you.